What's up everybody and welcome back to another video on SAT Math from the Scalar Learning Channel and today we are talking specifically about trigonometry on the SAT in particular must know trigonometry on the SAT. So just as a quick preface there's not a ton of trig on the SAT there's only a few things that you need to know. So this is going to be a relatively short video but people have been asking me hey can you make a video specific to trigonometry on the SAT so that's what we're doing let's do it. So the first thing that you got to know when we're talking about trigonometry is that age old acronym SOHCAHTOA. So let's break it down. What does SOHCAHTOA exactly mean? What does it refer to? It refers to these side length ratios that are uniform throughout for right triangles. So for example, and we're, we're going to talk about um, the three different functions, which are sine, cosine, and tangent, and these relative ratios. So first of all, the thing to remember for sine, cosine, and tangent, those are the, that's the S, the C, and the T in SOHCAHTOA. And SO, S-O-H, stands for sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of any angle, in this case it's angle A, is going to be equal to the opposite side of the triangle of that angle. So in, that, in this case, the blue side over the hypotenuse, which is the green side, which is always going to be the largest side opposite the right angle. Cosine of an angle of that same angle is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, that's relative to angle A. It's the non-hypotenuse side that's adjacent or next to A divided by the hypotenuse once again in green. So that hypotenuse just kind of stays as is. And last but not least, we've got TOA, which is opposite over adjacent. So it's the blue side over that brown side, right? Opposite over adjacent relative to angle A. And the cool thing about these ratios is that they are uniform. So any triangle, for example, let's say has a 35 degree angle in a right triangle, even if it's gigantic, right? Even if it's a huge triangle, sine of 35 will equal sine of 35 degrees of a much smaller triangle. And that's the cool thing. These ratios stay consistent. So now if we take an example, and again, having Sokotoa up in the right-hand side as a reference, we take an example of a triangle, right? And we've got this angle theta here. Theta is often used as a variable instead of X for angles. And we've got a nice 5, 12, 13 right triangle, which is again a Pythagorean triple, by the way. So if we were to, for example, to take sine of theta, it would be opposite that theta, which is 5, over the hypotenuse, which is 13. If we were to take cosine of theta, it's adjacent, meaning the side next to it, 12, over the hypotenuse, 13. Last but not least, tangent of theta would be that opposite side, 5, over the adjacent side, 12. Another important thing to recognize that they always test on the SAT in terms of trigonometry is this relationship, which is that sine of an angle equals cosine of the complement of that angle. And this a lot of times will manifest in a way where they'll say like, hey, we have a triangle with two angles other than the right angle. Let's just say we have A and B. And they'll say sine of A is equal to one half. What's cosine of B? So in a right triangle, A and B are going to be complementary. So sine of A will actually equal cosine of B. This happens all the time. So just like here, sine of X will equal cosine of 90 minus X, meaning sine of 10 equals cosine of 80. Why? Those are complementary angles, meaning they add up to 90 degrees. And this relationship continues for all of these angles. We could say 30 and 60, right? Sine of 30 equals cosine of 60 and so on and so forth. The other thing we want to be familiar with on the SAT is where sine, cosine, and tangent are positive and negative. So that's important as well. So if you look at this quadrant here, four quadrants for the standard XY coordinate plane, we see that we got quadrant one, two, three, and four. All of these functions are going to have different signs depending on what quadrant they're in. So for example, if we have a theta value that's between zero and 90 degrees, or of course in radians, zero and pi halves, pi halves and 90 are equivalent, we're going to be ending up in quadrant one. If we've got a theta value that's between 90 and 180, or pi halves and pi, pi is the same as 180, we're in quadrant two. Uh, between 180 and 270, quadrant three, and 270 and 360, quadrant four. Now we have this cool little acronym that you can remember. All students take calculus. So what does this mean? This means that for all the quadrant one, everything is positive, whether it's sine, cosine, tangent. For quadrant two, S, all students. S means sine is positive, right? Everything else is negative. Quadrant three, tangent is going to be positive because of the T in quadrant four, C, cosine is going to be positive. Everything else is negative. So once again, students syncs up with sine, take tangent and calculus cosine.
So now let's look at some concrete examples. For example, sine of 120 degrees, that'd be in quadrant two, where sine is positive, that'd give us a positive value. Sine of 195, that's gonna be quadrant three, right between 180 and 270, that's gonna give us a negative value. If we had tangent of 220, that's gonna be positive because it's in quadrant three, and tangent is positive in quadrant three. Tangent of 330 is gonna be negative because now we're talking about quadrant four where tangent is not positive, it's negative. Cosine of 335, that's going to be quadrant four. That's where cosine is indeed positive. And last but not least, cosine of 135 in quadrant two, cosine there is going to be negative. Last but not least, let's talk about the unit circle. So the unit circle is something that I don't always recommend to having to commit to memory entirely, but I do feel like as of late, it's been, a, it's been coming in more handy than not. So if you can memorize this with some ease, I, I would recommend it. So check it out. One thing to remember when we have this nice unit circle here is first of all, sine of an angle value equates to the y value in those coordinates. So for example, you see 30 degrees down there. Sine of 30 degrees is equivalent to that one half of the coordinate for the, the 30 degree co corresponding coordinate, right? You see square root three over two comma one half. So sine of 30 would be one half. Cosine of a theta value corresponds with the x value in the coordinates. And last but not least, tangent of theta corresponds with the ratio of the y value over the x value. So let's get into some concrete examples. So if we were to try and find sine of 45, it's square root of 2 over 2 because that is the corresponding y value of that coordinate that is on that 45 degree marker. If I was trying to take cosine of 150, we see that is the x value of that coordinate at 150 degrees. And again, that corresponds with what we talked about last time. 150 for cosine is quadrant two, it's gonna be negative, hence negative rad three over two. Last but not least, we have tangent of 240. You can see that's in quadrant three, and that's gonna be the ratio of the y divided by the x. So square root of three over two, negative of course, divided by negative one half. Dividing by negative one half is like multiplying by negative two. So you double that uh, and obviously the negatives cancel out and we get positive square root of three. If you have this down, great. If you don't, it's totally fine as well because you can always calculate the reference angle, meaning that angle that is the shortest distance from where this angle lands and the x-axis. So for example, for 240, it's only 60 degrees away from 180. So you could also just be like, all right, tangent of 60, I can figure out what that is. And then since we know what's in quadrant three, you know tangent's positive there, positive that answer. So that's it for this video on must know trigonometry on the SAT. Once again, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a relatively small topic on the SAT. There's not a ton to know, but this gives you everything. This gives you more than everything than what you need to be successful on the math portion of the SAT when it comes to trigonometry. If you guys like this video, make sure to click that like button. And if you wanna see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.